our lifetime here is a balance of very intense inner work and learning how to enjoy the intimacy of life, the pleasures of life, how, we, how to be present to the pain and the growing pains of our expansion. It's, it's all of it. And so a, an ideal spiritual retreat is one that's not blowing like magical fairy dust up your ass. It's saying, how can I help you feel more empowered when you go back into the world that you're creating, to the platform that you're offering, to the people that you're serving? How, how are you ready to be served? And how are you ready to take that next level of responsibility? You know, it's like, it's not a vacation. Like if you're looking for a true, genuine spiritual re retreat, it's not a vacation. A vacation is a vacation. You want to sit on a white beach and drink Mai Tais, that's a vacation or whatever version of vacation you want to have. It's, it's, it's a like, let's just let go and stop thinking. If you're going on a spiritual experience, you're going to do profound inner work that's going to hopefully activate the next level of, of your expansion. So we have a curriculum called the Stargate 2 curriculum. And I talk about this extensively, that the reason why people get so frustrated with leadership is because leadership is a journey of taking responsibility for what is yours to do in this world. And one of the things that scares the bejesus out of people when it comes to you know, accruing greater wealth, greater uh, reach in their audience, uh, uh, you know, your platform being more seen, having more employees or contractors working for you, is it's work. And it's up to us to define how we want to co-create with others. There's no, I, la I mean, no offense if anybody has a business degree, like really good for you. But like, honestly, like nothing could have taught me in my own education. And I had a really good education. What was coming in being a business owner? What was coming for a spiritual leader? I literally had to learn it in the trenches of the dream that I was giving, the visions that I was giving birth to, boots on the ground. Like to have the guts to lead, to have the guts to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, it's literally guts. And so we talk about this in the Stargate 2 curriculum that if you are a creatrix, there's three major archetypes we talk about, the creatrix, the teacher, and the healer. Those are the three interdependent archetypes of divine feminine Christ leadership, the creatrix, the teacher, and the healer. And they work interchangeably. If you're, if you're predominantly a creatrix, don't you worry. That teacher archetype is going to come knocking on your door one way or another. If you're primarily a teacher archetype, don't you worry. That shamanic opening to the healer within you, that archetype is going to come knocking on your door. And then it's going to activate your creatrix. These archetypes are within anyone who's a natural born leader. And so part of what I'm really intuiting um, from your beautiful question is like, how do I deal with being a creatrix? And we have a curriculum for that. And I'm so moved by all of, by your years of service. I'd like to gift it to you. So you can explore some of those teachings for yourself and really feel, um, yeah, like, oh God, I know the pain of being a creatrix. Oh my God. So many like nights where I like go to sleep, constantly thinking about all the things that are being created and wake up to the same conversation. It's like, it's a lot to manage. And that's why leaders need leaders. That's why we need this kind of dialogue with one another. It's like, you're not, when you go to those things, tell your consciousness, I'm not going on vacation. Even if it's a silent meditation retreat, I'm sorry, silent meditation is not like sitting on a beach. You are going in and looking at some pretty heavy places for 10 days straight. So that's, that is work. And, you know, it's like, we want to ask ourselves, who is the one within me that, that wants to be loved, right? Into her, her next empowerment, you know, what's her name? What's her age? What, what's the archetype within you that's, that's, that's coming forward that's like, I do want to have this level of abundance. Yes, it is a lot to manage. Or can I be curious, is it? Who do I need to call in as a creatrix? Who do I need to invoke to co-create with me the management of this level of abundance? Right? It's like we want our, the, the, initial, the initial pain of like, oh my God, I wasn't expecting this to come along with more wealth, assets, abundance, resources, but of course, of course it, com it comes with the responsibility of managing it. 
And so leadership, you know, we talk a lot about creative genius in the Sophia Code and how that creative genius is already a part of you as your higher self. And your higher self is that creative genius that has the solutions when we abstain from victimizing ourselves by our own choices to create and we choose to swing into the center place. I am a sovereign creator. I chose this life. Being here is a privilege. I get to show up to this leadership. Leadership comes with responsibilities. I would rather be a person that has these kind of responsibilities. Why? Because that means you are a person in tune and embodying your power. And we talk a lot about power in the Sophia Code. Machiavelli taught us power is power. It is neither good nor bad. And every single human being on this planet is an atomic bomb level of power. And most human beings on this planet are terrified of how powerful they are. And when we choose to get really behind our own leadership, 100% on our own team, of our, our inner team, and we're like, yes, I don't have to like every part of leading. I don't have to like having these responsibilities, but I do like being a powerful person because I like making a difference in this world. I like standing up for what I believe in. And I like that people know that they can trust me because I am responsible and I show up to my responsibilities. It might look different than how Susie Q over there is showing up to her responsibilities and how she's managing her money or assets, but I know how I'm doing my deal. And my deal is me being in my power.